All right. Well, it's it's a Monday. At least I think it is. I don't know. And days days kind of blend together when you're when you're busy. But good evening. I can officially say good evening to Rustam because you're you're living in the future, and I'm living here in the good past. evening from the future. <laughs> good you morning to you. Zone. Gotta love time good zones, morning. right? Uh, time zones are a magical thing, aren't they? There's like a, you know. It's you can talk about future and past and you know almost like having a time machine so when you're flying back and forth, right? Same basic concept. It's it's oh it's much worse when you have to fly <laughs> into the time zones. There's no getting around that. It always messes up your your internal clock, especially if you have the misfortune of crossing the dateline. That's always oh, yeah. been the one that hurts me the most. You know, <laughs> I've gotten pretty good at moving in and out of you know Europe and things like that, but man, you you push me across the dateline and and bad things happen to say the least. To say the <laughs> least, but. Well, good evening, my friend. I'm, I'm so delighted you could hang out with me here on a, on a random Monday. Thank you for, for sticking around late. I know it's it's your, your few hours ahead of me, so I do appreciate that. Um, I am wearing my coffee shirt. We'll get back to that. That's a future question. But I got to start with I know you're my drinking coffee. coffee. Of course you are. Of course you <laughs> oh, are. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. It, it, it's not called the coffee club for no reason. You know, I know, crazy. right? I mean, you have to keep the keep up the appearance. You know, it's important to 100%. kind of you know. 100%. So I'm just you know coffee cup here, and um, and thank you, thanks a lot for having me. Of it's course. really great to 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 be here. <laughs> well, it, it's it's always you know I think that's one of the really unique aspects of of our lives the fact that we have friends, colleagues that live all around the world you know I, I used to joke with people that my my weekly poker game doesn't meet in the same city and no one it lives in the same city many don't even live in the same continent and, and it is a really unique thing that we we can experience that you know you and i ran into each other in july in barcelona neither of us lives in barcelona nope. and, and yet that's where we ran into each other i guess well, we also saw each other in april back in in atlanta too but oh yeah we did yes yeah sure. i mean as you and I were talking in the pre-show, that's the whole reason I even put this between chair and keyboard thing together is I missed hanging out with my friends, which we used to get to do pretty regularly. And then the pandemic happened and, and okay, well, so I, I'm delighted that, that people still are willing to hang out with me on a, on a random live stream. But uh, anyway, why don't you give folks your, your origin story? How'd you get into this weird world of computers? And, and then we'll, we'll see where the muse takes us. Yeah, that's fun. Um, that's actually an interesting question. And I, it, it happens that I, 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 I get that question from time to time, actually quite, kind of often. And it's always a kind of funny story, you know, down the memory lane. So it kind of happened on, um, it's, it's happened at school at some point. Or I, I, I mean, I, I think anyway, it happened at school or uh, I don't remember. It was around the same time when, uh we had we got a computer at home but i think i got it a bit late like a tiny little bit later but i think it's happened in school and we had those uh relatively old machines they were kind of looking like commodore 64 you know with the, sure. the, you know everything in a keyboard and everything but they were made by yamaha and they were running okay. a, a basic so they oh, kind of know. were uh green screen this little machines uh with everything in a keyboard running basic so you just put them up and they would be just like a prompt and then yep. you'd start type typing your code and uh, uh it was actually quite old setup to be that uh to back in that back in the days because we got those replaced with brand new pentium 2s uh quite like just a ye couple of years later so those were getting really old but they were still there you know and then i kind of you know was it was fun and then i would get a book uh with all the code and with all the different kind of programs and then you would start typing them all line by line and then running it and it would do something and then you would have to um you know modify things and see how it all right. started and also you know so all those things it was it was actually quite fun thing and those were the the interesting thing was that they were actually connected in a some kind of network so there was a one main computer that had a floppy drive so you could actually save all your code to a floppy drive because otherwise it would just disappear if you just turn it off of course and uh, so you could do that but then you had to go to and talk to the teacher because he was the only one who was actually allowed to touch that computer of course. and that one had 
colored screen, not Ooh, just green one. I know, right? Fancy. So that was that was uh, Rustam, uh, like early teens, uh, getting uh, getting his hands on some code and computers, and uh, then it was like you know. Uh, most of the people would go and doing something else when the classes would be canceled or something would happen, mm -hmm. and uh, I would be kind of running up and 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 getting to to <laughs> to those computers, and then uh, and then like I said, we got Pentium twos very very like maybe a year or two later. So there was like those things were getting really really old back then. Sure. Uh, but yeah, so that was my first thing, and then I kind of continued with this. Computers and you know, then I went moved on from basic to uh, what was that? Oh yeah, around that time, just a few years later, uh, one of those computer science teachers he was actually telling me this thing. He was like, "Hey, you know what? This new fancy language just got released. That was that's really really cool. You should try that." And uh, it just got released. It's like fresh off the press, like super new, super brand new. Can you guess what language that was? Late nineties, like mid nineties. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess pots. <laughs> well, it has something to do with coffee, right? That's right. That's right. Uh, <laughs> so it was actually Java, and it was fun because. Uh, hello, Mary. Hey, good to see you. Thanks for joining us, Mary. Great to see you, Mary. <laughs> You're too kind. You're too kind, Mary. You're way too kind. You are our favorite person as well. At All least right. mine, and I'm pretty sure. I mean, I'm talking oh, for both absolutely. of us. <laughs> absolutely. So yeah, well, that's the kind of a uh, long version of a short story about like how I got into this thing, and then uh, you know, I never really stopped doing that. Right. Even though I studied first something different, I didn't do oh, computer course. science to begin with, like for a few years. And then I went back to computer science, and then I was like doing my computer science uh, degree here in Oslo, and uh, got my bachelor's, master's. You know, started working, and it was pretty much uh, Java all the way since then. But in sure. between, I think I was, I went through some four no Pascal Turbo Pascal was a thing for a little okay. bit for sure. a very short period of time. And then it was Java, and there was like a bunch of other things like Python and even Fortran. Actually, I had some for I wrote some Fortran wow. code. <laughs> wow! See, I, I can only go so far back. Not Cobol. professionally, I wrote, I wrote not a professionally bit though. Of Cobol, you know, and that was that was it. You know, it, that's interesting that you say you started in something else and came back to computer science. That that is surprisingly common in at least in my circle, and and I don't know what to make of that. I I don't know if that's really a trend or not. But I mean, that was my path too. I, I started as a chemistry major and then got into computer science. But it, it is an interesting thing how many folks sort of come into it sideways or backwards. And, and I, I don't know what to make of that. But but I, I do think it's an interesting aspect of, of our industry that lots of folks come around to it eventually. I started as a petroleum engineer. So I was actually uh -huh. doing like uh, kind of close to chemistry, but I mean, it was at least I had a bunch of chemistry and physics and physical chemistry and all sure. the fun stuff. <laughs> I mean, I, I know for me, part of what attracted me to chemistry, at least in my college, was the fact that they had all these, these SGI workstations. And they did all sorts of really cool stuff on them. Oh. And I'm like, oh, that looks like fun. And then after <laughs> I, I got an OCHEM and I really got tired of, of doing all the pre and post and, and trying to schedule that into my already busy life as a college student, then I'm like, you know, I think that maybe this computer thing makes more sense. Because if I make a mistake on line 67, I just fix line 67, as opposed to you made a mistake in your chemical reaction and you need to start over. And you know, I, I was talking last week, my, my <laughs> guest made the point, and it might have killed you. And it's like, yeah, that's oh, also yeah. a good point, that if you're not careful, you can harm yourself mm -hmm. with what you make in chemistry lab. Good times. Uh, uh, but uh, Speaking of correcting mistakes, do you remember what you had to do with those basic machines, like old ones? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I, you had I, to I don't miss the old days. You had to press enter, because if, if you just change the line, Without pressing enter on that line, it would not be read. It would look correct on the screen, mm. but it would not actually be read into memory. So you would get old results and new looking code. And you're like, you're why did I do this? <laughs> it, it's almost like this industry didn't want anyone to be in it. 
<laughs> you know, you think about all the roadblocks like that, where it's, it, and I'm sure that made sense to somebody, but it's, it's just like, what is it? Is it, is it Python where you type in Q and it says, no, no, what you really meant to do is this. Mm. You, you interpreted what I said. Why didn't you just do what I wanted you? You <laughs> knew what I wanted you to do, but that wasn't enough. No, you're, you're going to tell me how to do it the right way. Like, okay. Cool. Mm. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. It's like the DSL at Starbucks. You know, no, you can't have a large. You have to order a mente because reasons. So the tall yeah. is not, in fact, the largest. So anyway, <laughs> oh, good times. Yeah, I know what you mean about Java. I, I in college, I studied C and C++, mostly C++, and, and Java was just starting to kind of appear at that point. And I remember one of our professors actually had shown us this applet he'd made and we're all, that's pretty cool. And, mm -hmm. and then I got into the real world and was, was stuck doing not that, but somebody, a friend of mine had started up a Java study group. And so I, I got into that world and then eventually I figured out, Hey, somebody in our company is writing a Java app. I want to mm -hmm. be on that. And I found my way onto that team. And that was kind of the, you know, the rest is history, I guess, as they say, but. Uh, that's uh, that's kind of well. I mean, uh, for me, Java. I started Java with Java at the university here, 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 and also. But mm, I think I was second or third year where they actually started teaching Java. Before sure. that, uh, they were using Simula. I don't know if you remember oh, the Simula. Yeah. So you know the the kind of the 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 mother or father or whatever you know uh, word you want to use for all the object oriented programming right. languages, which was actually kind of invented or created in here in Oslo. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the language that they used to teach all the object oriented programming until sure. I think it was like mine was my class when I started with Java. I think it was like second or third year when they actually okay. switched to 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 Java from similar. So that was uh, that was a bit funny piece of history. Oh sure. <laughs> No, I, I, that was one of my favorite classes in college was sort of seeing the the tree of all these languages and mm -hmm. what languages descended from what and what borrowed from others. You know, that's one of those things you start to realize after a while is there's more similarities than differences. And as you learn more languages, you have more things to compare to and, and it gets easier to learn the next one for sure. But mm. yeah, I, I always find that really fascinating to see kind of who's borrowed from what. And oh, yeah. Like C Sharp, for instance. Oh, C Sharp looks so much like Java. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. They capitalize things wrong, Layla. Mm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's, it's usually uh, Java with, with kind of the Microsoft's uh, right. Speak. way of writing i mean they usually capitalize the first letters and you know do all this kind of stuff but apart from that is yeah, yeah it's pretty similar pretty similar but well let's let's talk about a, a topic near and dear to both our hearts let's let's talk about let's talk about coffee all right so again this, this is my little <laughs> t-shirt today i know you're drinking coffee i've i've had uh, two double espressos this morning as is my norm uh, how much coffee is too much coffee is is there such a thing as too much coffee i think uh, we, i <sighs> Didn't we agree on N plus one? Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely have to touch on the N plus one problem. I, I do I do agree that the coffee falls into an N plus one scenario where- I think there is a limit somewhere. I mean, there, there is, is like some kind there of- uh, Yeah, a friend of mine says, if you can taste color, have one more. And then that's that's it, You're, you, should, you should tap out. So I don't, I've never run into that yet. So I guess that means I've never had too much coffee. You can just keep, keep on going. Well, I mean, it's like, it's, it's also when you're kind of your, it's your right. hands getting like this, like if you're buzzing, uh, mm -hmm. shaky, like really shaky. And mm -hmm. that's, that's probably not a good idea, but you know, apart yeah, from or, that, or if, yeah. if you, you have those involuntary leg movements, then yeah, maybe, maybe you've gone too far. <laughs> maybe you've gone too far. Now you, you're lucky because there is an amazing roaster in Oslo that I, I have gone to in the past and I'm blanking on the name off the top of my head, but there is a very, very good roaster. Oh, there's, there's a lot of them, uh, but I'm not sure which one you, you, uh, well, so the thing know. is, uh, very often it's, uh, kind of light roasted coffee that mm. you find here. It's not that much of like dark, dark roasts. Okay. And I think Norway is one of the, I think if I remember correctly, I might be lying right now, but I mean, if I don't, I think Finland is in pl first place when it comes to okay. coffee and stuff. But Norway and the whole Scandinavia really is quite far up on top there. And Norway is in like, I don't know, third, second, whatever place. If, if I remember correctly, when it comes to like coffee consumption per, 
per 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 capita, if you can call it that. Sense. It makes sense, right? I mean, why why wouldn't we? I mean, it, it's so we import a lot of coffee, and it sure. usually means we import a lot of. I mean, there's a good chance of having good coffee, so that's yes. uh, that's really nice. Yes, I agree, and I, I'm, I'm my my googling skills are, are weak today. I'm not finding it, but I, I will. Don't worry, I'll, I'll make sure I get it to you uh, before the day is done. <laughs> I will track it down. Uh, I just know when I went there, my buddy signed, told me, hey, you got to go to this place. And I walked up there and I had a cold brew that was one oh. of the most complicated things I've ever tasted. It was amazing. Oh. It, it had so much going on in there. It was it was nuts. And uh, I didn't sleep well that night because they kept handing me shots of espresso to try. And I'm like, yes, I'll have more. Well, yes, that would more would be lovely. And, and <laughs> Yeah, so I didn't I didn't fall asleep very much that night. So oh, that's that's that's, that's fun. I so I good. went so overboard with being like super coffee nerd uh, during during the lockdowns. Oh, yeah. So I would just like you know I was like oh this coffee from like you know super uh, organically responsibly produced from a super super cool place and super yeah. that and super this, and then you just buy that. I was like hmm this is nice and how do I how do I brew it today? You know, go mm -hmm. V60, AeroPress, you know, drip, you know, all this. And then you just go, you go totally overboard right. with like, right. you know, over engineering the process. And uh, yep. So that's. Um, so, so Glenn says with DoorDash, there's no limit and <laughs> he's not wrong. You know, it's coffee as a service. It's, it's amazing <laughs> what, what can happen when you, when you uh, have the internet at your disposal and then, okay, Mary's going to give True. a shout out for Simula as well. So, so we're yeah, not, we're not on do you have a, like a preferred brewing method? Is there something you fall back on on a regular basis that that's sort of your, <sighs> your go-to? I go into very big fan of uh, AeroPress, uh, yeah. but so I don't know how. Uh, I don't know if people know what that is, or 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 maybe I should probably. Explain. So it's a big. Think of a big kind of syringe. You know, this little thing with it, with it, with a piston that moves into a, like a, 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 a thing. So the funny story: that guy was actually producing frisbees first. So he was actually selling frisbees, and then at some point he was like, "Yeah, that was that's the weird part." Uh, so it's it's somewhere I think it's somewhere in California. Okay. So he was producing frisbees, if I remember that correct. And then he kind of at some point he was like, "Oh, you know, let's make coffee." And I'm, you know, I'm not That's getting paid does, or right? anything to talk about that. So right. this is just kind of my personal thing. So no right. promotion here. But the thing is, so he 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 started doing this, and it's, I think the original idea was that you can create uh, espressos. So it's it was sure. actually an espresso machine, which is, I mean it's a manual thing, but it's not right. a machine. But yeah. Uh, but then a lot of people started kind of doing, there's a, like different ways of doing that. So there is like a, a reverse way of doing a repress or like the, the, the other way of doing like the, the, the upside down way, the, the upright way of doing it. And, uh, and people started actually brewing just regular coffee, not espressos. Sure. And that's much more common. I think at least yeah. that's what I do it. And uh, and that's that's actually really fun because it kind of becomes a kind of meditation routine, and you can't yeah, drink too much of it. Mm -hmm. So you spend like I don't know four or five minutes making one cup, and then you end up uh, doing it. So that one is really nice. But if I want to do it for more than one cup, usually it will be some kind of drip thing. Okay. So like you know V sixty or something similar, you know, with with little. Uh, a little V-shaped thing on top yeah. where you put filters and stuff and then let it just, let, let the gravity do the work. Yep. Uh, so I think I usually, I usually will end up with one of those. What about you? I'm an espresso guy. That, that's my number one. And many, many moons ago, my wife had the brilliant notion of we should have our own espresso machine at home. Mm. And so I did what anyone would do, and I reached out to my dear friend Matthew McCullough, who I knew had just bought an espresso <laughs> machine. And I said, "Well, what did you get, and why?" And so he put me in that direction, and I've had a Breville dual boiler ever since. In fact, I, I finally had to upgrade last year. My long-serving dual boiler required a servicing, you know, some kind of mm -hmm. a cleaning, a deep cleaning that it needs periodically. And, and when I reached out to Breville, I said, "Uh, yeah, we don't." 
we don't fix that one anymore. You have to buy a new one. I'm like, oh, okay. So I had to buy a new one. Oh, oh, ouch, ouch. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's pretty. You know, I, I like to say like two doubles. This kind of just gets me to normal, and then we. we go so the that. next question, espresso for the, that I usually ask espresso like people. I mean, I do like espresso as well, but I don't do it like very often or every day, and I kind of feel it. But do you shot it or do you actually kind of drink it slow? Uh, it depends. <laughs> so the normal for me would be a latte, like an iced latte. Oh yeah. Okay. So you, you, for the milk. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that I, that will obviously take me a little bit of time to drink. If, if I'm hmm. really, really tired, if I didn't sleep well, I will sometimes pull an extra shot that I will sip hmm. while I'm pulling the normal shots that I make for my wife. And I. Oh, <laughs> I typically do it. I will say one of the most underrated desserts you can possibly make is an affogato, I believe is the pronunciation. Uh, that's the Italian, uh, you take like vanilla ice cream or gelato, if you're really doing it right, and you pour a Ooh. shot of espresso over the top of it. Oh, now that I'm getting pretty amazing dessert. Hungry, I guess. I don't know. I know whatever, I know. whatever the word is for, for, for craving that. <laughs> yeah, it's well, because it's one of those things where, you know, if you, you, you have the amazing combination of hot, cold, bitter, sweet, like, it, and it's always changing. You know, it's just, it's, it's absolutely nuts. So, oh, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. That's really, so, really, that sounds really cool. Yeah. So, Glenn says he drinks his very slowly. Otherwise, we have to peel him off the ceiling. I, I kind of <laughs> like to see a hyped up Glenn. I, I can get behind that to say the least. So, and we, we got Fuel Snable. Hello, Fuel. How are you today? Um, I Hello. think I pronounced it right. It occurred to me last week that maybe I'm not. So if I'm not, you can tell me the right way to pronunciate that. I'm not I'm not so great at that. But uh, memory serves, I think you guys are almost neighbors, if memory serves. I mean, not like next door neighbors, but I believe you're in the same neck of the woods if, if my mind is working today. Oh, really? Uh, also in Norway or? Uh... I thought Fuel was in Norway. Or is he in Sweden? Uh, he'll, he'll respond. He's... He says his, joke, his name is a joke. Man. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with a joke name. I'm, I'm all over that. You know, I, I think I think that makes it more interesting, frankly. You know, ah, Oslo, Norway. Yes, I knew I had. See, this, this is oh, you I'm are. Looking. Hello. Hello, and, neighbor. And see, I live <laughs> I live in in Minnesota, which I joke is Scandinavia West. And, and the first time I was in in actually in um, uh, Sweden, I realized I instantly figured out why so many people from that neck of the woods settled in this neck of the woods because it, it, if, if i had not been on an airplane i would not have realized i had gone anywhere so I that's was, yeah that's true but, i mean uh we are very much neighbors i'm right in the middle of the middle of the middle of the oslo right now so that way uh it's the norwegian parliament just uh like 20 meters away so you know i'm Hello from Oslo. <laughs> Hi, fellas. Hi, Zaffies. How are you? Good, good to have Hello. you. Hello. I always like people commenting. A nice avatar. As long as, as long as, yeah, that is pretty cool. I gotta, I gotta get me one of those. I don't, I don't have an interesting avatar to say the least. But life is good. So, do, how do you feel about like French press versus AeroPress? Is is there? It's is there a noticeable difference. I and mean, this is always yeah. one of those things where I can say, you know, as as coffee snobs, we'll always invent a difference, but. I mean, I'm 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 kind of a pretend coffee snob. I mean, I would love I I always love to talk about it, but there's always there's a million of people that know better than coffee their coffee than I do, uh, mine. But I mean, like for me, so that's all. It's going to be kind of you know subjective, I guess. Uh, um, French press is a very different uh, consistency because so the thing and actually two things so. Uh, AeroPress would push things through a filter, so you get it much uh, cleaner. So this, like, it's there is no like sediments or any residue or anything left. And also, they say it might be a bit healthier because it kind of goes through the mm -hmm. filter, so it kind of co collects all this uh, fatty part of the coffee. Okay. While French press is just basically a metal, metal metal filter, so everything goes through, but also a tiny little, like very fine particles of coffee go through. So then you will get a little bit more muddy way, way of, uh, you know. But it's I like it too. I I do have at least one, maybe even more. Oh yeah, I have one big one and one tiny little one for one cup, uh, yeah. French press. So I mean I. I went to like I said, I went I went from just a coffee machine at home to like five or six different ways of brewing it. 
during COVID. I mean, that's right, that's. Right. I mean, that's. I guess it's that was one of the symptoms. Only responsible thing to do. <laughs> so see, yeah, that, that's how you know whether you have COVID or not. Because if you can't smell or taste your coffee, I mean, you're really just having a daily test. Is really what it boils down to. That's 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 that was uh, that was exactly the uh, idea. Because you right, know, I was exactly. like, you know, better safe than sorry. It's right. much easier <laughs> and faster than you know self tests. Exactly. Which we were doing a lot of as well, yeah. but I mean they're yeah. a little bit more pleasant, just like smelling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. freshly mm -hmm. bur like freshly right. fried kind of coffee beans, and it's like you know. <laughs> so we got we got Zaffy's is from near Toronto. See, I always joke that Minnesota is southern Canada, so that works for me. Yeah, and then, it's uh, very close. Fuel Snable says I'm a shader snob. All right, all right, mm -hmm. and what else we got? I'm reminded <laughs> of Jordan Schlansky. Um, Oh, I must not have got Assistant all the way there. Assistant producer Conan O'Brien um, show. All okay, right. all right, it's all good. All right. It's all good. No, I, I, I agree with you. I, I think in so many of these things, we we sometimes invent um, mm. things, right? I, I whenever I hear tasting notes on coffee or wine or whiskey, oh, it's like, yeah. oh yeah, I have notes of peach and and tar and straw. I'm like, really? I mean, I think I think we're making some of that up, which and I'm a little bit of. With. You know, with with a slight hint of moon, like you know, the moonlight, you know, on on a starry <laughs> night, and you know, it's that's that's how it is. You know, you have to make it like beautiful. I mean, you don't say we're having baked potato potatoes, right, or fried like you know yeah. onions, it's like sautéed. Mm -hmm. You know, and everything. you have to add these fancy things, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to do that with programming, by the way. That's a it's good not point. compiled. It's just no. like you know. Freshly baked jar out of you know something. I don't know. We should we should invent that. You're if right. you have any suggestions for you know compile word compile, please do That's write it in, in in the this, chat. <laughs> this, this code has sort of a sousant of uh, you know garbage with an overlay of locker room and a bit of, of stale cigarette smoke. Yes, yes. I think Are we talking, talking about code smells now? Yeah, now, now we're about talking about really crappy code, and I think we can take that in some really interesting <laughs> directions. Uh, okay, so so the, the assistant producer is a coffee snob, too. I mean, I think we're all snobs about something, and this tastes like socks. Oh, boy, I don't... That means... <laughs> see, now, I will admit that... I will go out of my way to find good coffee. I'm not the kind of person who's like, sure, I'll take whatever has been sitting in this mm. pot at the conference for the last 12 hours. I will walk away from the venue and go find a good place. It's it's there's so much good coffee in the world. You should oh, go yeah. seek it out. That's another one of the, the cool perks of our gig is getting a chance to go visit some of these places. True. But you know, I, I, I actually I actually thing. I actually talked to a guy. He was like, I think he was like a serious coffee brewer and he was like selling coffee and stuff. And he was like, I do not waste my taste buds on bad coffee. He yes. was just like, you know, the, 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 I have so many taste buds and, you know, they, you know, it's very important that, you know, I just use them for a properly brewed right. proper coffee and I'm not right. drinking anything else. Life is too short to drink bad coffee. And and Fuel mm -hmm. Snable says the same thing about beer. Absolutely, True. we all have those True. things. Life oh, is yeah. too short to drink <laughs> bad X or eat bad X, and that that's perfectly perfectly natural. Mm -hmm. I one hundred percent agree True. with that. And oh, Zaffy says I, I say it tastes like soap if it sucks. Yeah, all right, I'm, I'm I'll, yeah. I'll we'll accept that. Yeah. We'll accept that as an answer. We'll accept that as an answer. <laughs> now we we we've sort of been touching on this, but but let's let's loop back to the n plus one problem. This came up Ooh. actually in cycling. Th this is the classic originator <laughs> of the n plus one problem. If you ask a moderate to 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 fanatical cyclist, how many bikes do you have? Well, Same I always answer. need one more, right? Mm -hmm. It's n plus one. However many bikes you have, you need that plus one more. And and so I, you and I were talking about that in relation to. Of course, it also works with coffee. It works with <laughs> golf clubs. It works with any number of things. But then you also have to make sure that you stay below S minus one, which is the number at which your spouse no longer is your spouse. And and sometimes mm -hmm. the number S is one. So the kind of the acceptable there. number for the family, like you know, members right. around you. I right. guess yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I realized at one point coming home from conferences, I had exceeded that number when it came to backpacks. And so I was <laughs> not noticed that I was no longer allowed to bring home backpacks. And then that became, you can bring home like two a year. And and then it's kind of this, I have to be very, so so often I'll be at a like, well, that's kind of a nice backpack, but, but there might be a better one. 
<laughs> uh, I'm not going to waste my 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 small handful of, of backpack chits. So. Do you have the same for t-shirts, like conference t-shirts? <laughs> well, I, I will admit that both my son and my my wife have an excellent collection of conference swag. <laughs> but Christine has gotten to the point where I and I, I will still text her just to see if she's interested. But like, do you do you have any interest in in a shirt from this event? And it's usually goes something along the lines of, "Is it black? Yes, then I don't want it." Is it soft? <laughs> yes. Okay, fine. You know, so there there is some variables. I, did, I will admit I was at an event this year. There was, and I don't remember who the, the vendor was, but they had a purple shirt. And I know she likes purple. Oh. So I, I snagged her one of those. So nice. You know, it's, it's, uh, so, oh, now Phil's going to say his Twitch streams, he's not so picky. Is that, is that why you're hanging out with us? I mean, probably fine. Probably fine. Okay. All right. All right. So he's, we're joking. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> oh, if I like backpacks, apparently I should go to Norway. Is there a particular, well, you know, okay. So, so this is something else and we'll, we'll get back to N plus one, but I have noticed that, that Norwegians definitely have different definitions of certain things. Like if, if, as, as a Minnesotan, as an American here, if we say we're going on a hike, that has a very different meaning than it does in Norway. In Norway, this could mean we're going to go up this mountain and there'll be some light repelling down the other side. And it's like, wait, that's not what we think of as a hike. You know, so <laughs> when you say backpacks are serious, I, I feel like this could almost be you, you could live out of that backpack if necessary, if you were caught out on a hike and it got a little snowy. Well, I mean, well, Fuel, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, like the way I, the, what, what I put into this sentence is that people would use backpacks for a lot of things. So, I mean, I walk around with a backpack to, to yep. work and back and forth all the day. I mean, every day and I would have like my laptop and stuff, but it's like a tiny little one. But then there is a lot of, uh, focus on kind of being really nice and ergonomic and all that. And I, mm. I have another one that is like a, a laptop backpack and you can fill it up. I used to travel with it quite a lot. But then the thing is, it's actually, well, it's, I think it's made in Sweden or something. But uh, the point is, it's still Scandinavian made and it's like, it has like, it has a lot of uh, smart things. And also sure. it has like, you put it on and it's fully packed because you have to travel to like, you know, to somewhere abroad to a conference or something. And it's kind of heavy. But it's made that way that you don't really feel that weight. It just right. distributes the weight. It's really nice. So I think that's what kind of I at least I put into that. And a lot of people would just uh, um, walk around with backpacks pretty much every right. day. Uh, one guy bought a backpack at work. Okay. Yeah, and then every everybody showed up to inspect it. Uh, you know what? I oh. here <laughs> fuel is absolutely dead on the correct backpack for the right occasion. Exactly. I think if, if you're in our line of work, especially if you travel, you understand the importance of a good backpack. Oh yeah. You, you got so it. I have, I have, I have like travel, uh, like everyday backpack, travel yeah. backpack, uh, waterproof backpack, a huge for like hiking with mm -hmm. a slight uh, chance of repelling somewhere backpack. Uh, even bigger backpack where you would put like your sleeping bag into a backpack right. kind of backpack. Right. And yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I'm kind of amazed when I, when I see people travel to an event and, and they have what I would call not a good backpack and mm. you know, it's like, no, you can't get, you gotta have the goods. You know, your, your you back know. starts aching oh, by just not, looking at not, it. You know? like, oh my God, you know, how I can do that. You know, and <laughs> you start to realize how important some of these, these, little features are so my my travel bag the laptop compartment is suspended off the bottom of the bag so when you slide your laptop in it doesn't go all the way to the bottom and your uh, first thought might be well doesn't that waste space but they're like you know what happens when no, bags no, 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 get no. dropped on the floor or somebody grabs no, no, your bag no, no. or falls off the table or whatever it's like yeah your laptop is suspended <laughs> so it doesn't you know you don't chip the uh the corner so uh yeah backpacks for survival well that's very very true in scandinavia in my experience it's a go back you know you just have your laptop have your back. battery and your mm -hmm. keyboard and then you just mm -hmm. go no i'm just kidding gotta have that, <laughs> gotta have that. so uh and i'm assuming fuel that that's a, a brand name um i'm gonna hope that's a brand name we're, we're gonna we're gonna put that one in there but yeah mostly for the name but it's pretty good as long as it's good it's all good well now that's a good point if i chip a corner that means i can buy a new one it's, it's sort of no, no. You know what? That's a big problem because then you have to replace all the stickers. Yeah, that's a good point. That's I good point. that's that's that kind of sucks. You know, just it's like sure. you know, 
laptops that go too early means new stickers. Mm, mm, yeah, that's yeah. really bad in our business, you know. That's true. That's true. Oh, <laughs> I'm not a snicker person or a sticker person. That's all right. All right. No, not at all. You're you're not banned. Eventually, I'm. Gonna no, it's okay. I mean, it's okay. I I I I was a very purist for some time, and then I kind of gave up. So I'm I'm in the middle somewhere, but I totally feel you. I agree, Zafis. You got to have different stuff whether you're going to travel or hike or work. You know exactly. that's why I have a work backpack that that stays in that condition, and and I don't use it for other things. Otherwise, things would get lost. Usually, you know what? Uh, a separate uh, kind of compartment, and not only compartment, but actually a separate opening mm. for a laptop. Oh, that's mm -hmm. amazing! That's mm -hmm. so nice. Yep. Yep. I snicker at stickers. Well played. Well played. Nice, nice use of the English language there. That's, uh, I'm, I'm all over that. So now I, I got to go back to, to some t-shirt stuff here. So fuel says I go to conferences for t-shirts. Yep. Oh, I yeah. totally understand that. I, I get that. I, a, a shocking amount of my work from home wardrobe is t-shirts from past conferences. And, and I, I agree. It is, it is an easy way to stock up on t-shirts and, and interesting. So Dev Nexus uh, pays Glenn in jackets. And, and I have I have one of those two. I have one of those mm -hmm. two, and mm -hmm. I love it. It's a really nice one. Yeah, I, I was I was rocking that vest most of the the spring. Frankly. No, but you did you did you get one just before COVID? The they had one. one. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, that one's quite nice. I uh, guess that's the one we're talking about. Yeah, the the black one with the, the little thing in the mm -hmm, back. Mm -hmm. where if you're a skier, which I am not, but you know, it's it's all good. No, but it's so. amazing for like early autumn. It's yeah. if it's a bit rainy yeah. and a bit chilly, that's right. really nice. Yeah, I use that so, quite a bit on on walks. A big shout out to oh. Dev Nexus guys. Oh. I still uh, think that's folks. some of the best conference swag going, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, kudos oh, to the yeah. team for what they come up with. So, oh yeah. Uh, I go for volume. Hey, you make it up on volume, fuel. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. And you know, you just you just keep it's it's all the show is. I just keep throwing stuff at the wall and, and I see what sticks. So So I think we got most of the things at the conferences. The only thing that they don't give away is like uh uh trousers, like you know, the the, the Yeah. Uh, you can get you can get socks, you can get like, shirts, you can get hats. Yeah. Jackets. I'm, I'm kind of ca careful with saying pants and tr trousers, you know, right. because people things. big bit means different things. But I mean, the outer ones, the ones you have on the outside, the long ones, okay. uh, those don't usually come at the conference. But you get like shirts, T-shirts. I even saw well socks. I even saw some people with uh, like shoes. I think somebody yes, was. I, I have a pair of Ozcon shoes. There you go. Some kind and caps and jackets. So everything yep. except the trousers. I mean, what, what's up with that? Glenn, Glenn says it's been discussed. So oh. I, I think part of the challenge there is sizing. Oh, that's yeah. Well, that's true. Thinking. That's true. There is like two variables all, all right. of a sudden. Right. right? It, you got to have a whole lot more of them because somebody's of this and of that versus of that. Mm, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, yeah that's true. a lot harder. I think you'd have a lot yeah. of a lot of leftovers. You know, mm. with the wrong inseam waist combination. So that makes be, sense. Okay. That would be okay, one of those fine. areas where you'd have to sign up and actually take what you signed up for, unlike what typically mm. happens, where people just grab whatever they. <laughs> it's like, oh well, it's a bit too big, small. So can I have a large or you know something? Guys, you know? and they're all gone. Mm. Thank you, thank you for that. So mm. it's good times, good times. Yeah, exactly. I, I think Glenn Glenn agreed <laughs> that that's the issue is is the size. Actually, for, but, uh, Oh, good times! Yeah, it, it's kind of amazing some of the stuff you can get at conferences. I, you know, you you get some stuffed animals. You get you get. I got a towel. At, at, you remember at, at JBC? Oh, I did that. Yes, I did that too. Yes, I did get one too. Mm -hmm. Stuffed animals. Oh, yes, I do have. Actually, funny story. I have um, uh, open sushi. Uh, little stuffed uh, stuffed. Um, uh, what's that? The, the 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 chameleon, I think, isn't oh, it? Sure. Like the, the the you know the logo they have this little yeah. So I have one of those even. That's really fun. Mm -hmm. Is there, you know, I mean, we, we've obviously been talking about Dev Nexus and, and you know, Java Zone, other events. Mm -hmm. are, are there any events that you, you really look forward to each year? Anything you've got on your calendar? Anything coming up that you're really excited about? I, uh, after I kind of discovered Dev Nexus, I was like, really, I, I love it. I mean, it's like, it's really amazing stuff they do. It's really, it was funny story because it was my last conference it happened to become my last conference uh, before COVID. Yeah. And it's also happened to be my first international one after COVID. So, you know, sure. Sure, nice so that was fun. 
uh, that was that was kind of really nice. So I, I really I, I I'm kind of fell in love with the, the, those guys, and I also love you know the the, the Barcelona conference that I was like yeah. that where where we met last. I mean they I've been there pretty much every year since they start. I think I started. I did I, I didn't go in the first year. I didn't I haven't heard about them back then. But from the second year on, I think I think I've been to all of them. Maybe I missed one. Maybe. Sure. And now it's like seven, eight of them that has been. So it's it's really good. I mean, I really love. I there is this thing that I call a conference with a soul in a way. You know, it kind oh, of yeah. feels warm and fuzzy, and you feel like one big happy family. Mm -hmm. And that is, I think, a very important thing because, like, you know, some conferences you just you know you just come there, you do your thing, right. you meet people, you talk to people, but that's that's it. But there are some where you kind of get this extra little warm, fuzzy feeling right. kind of thing. And it's really, really nice. So yeah, it's, it's probably great. different for different people, but you know, then oh, you sure. get some, for sure. yeah. No, I, I think that's an interesting point. You know, conferences all have sort of a, a culture <clears throat> to it, just like a company yep. does. And, and it's <clears throat> really interesting to see how that works. I mean, there's some events that I guess you would call maybe more corporate-y. And then, you know, I think about like Codemash is a perfect example of, of an event, like mm -hmm. uh, not of the corporate, right? Of the exact opposite of that, where you've mm -hmm. got, you know, people bring their families and, and mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's such a, you know, interesting mix of, of folks. And then, you know, in of all places, a water park in, in Ohio in January, you know, and, and it brings such an interesting group of folks together. And, and I agree with you that there are some amazing events that, you know, like, well, like KCDC, like like Java Zone, like Dev mm -hmm. Nexus, like JBC. Yeah, I mean, there's so many great events that really do have that culture of bringing folks together, and, and it's it's like it's 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 like a reunion every time you go, and like oh yeah, exactly we're... right. Yeah. Speaking of amusement parks, uh, have you been to uh, this thing called Java Land in in Germany? No, no. Uh, it is it is or so there? Okay, there is a there is an amusement park in the middle of Germany, so it's like it's somewhere. Roughly right in between uh, Bonn and Cologne, or Köln, okay. And then uh, it's like a, it's a tiny little place, and a kind of very relatively small place. But yeah. uh, what they have is a huge amusement park, uh, which is normally amusement park. And then they do a few, maybe a weeks or a month before it opens for general public, they rent it out to a bunch of Java communities in, in Germany or, you know, all that. And they organize Java land because that place is called Fantasia land, which is like right. fantasy land. Right. Or, uh, and, and, and then you, you do, you do Java land there and then you do talks and everything. So first you can do, you can happen to do a talk at a, a like, 4D cinema stage, so you have like you know chests with gold and pirates and stuff in behind you and everything, and then you do your talks. Uh, or and oh sometimes you don't. I mean, the, depending on on like the stage and the, the track and everything. But then right. in the evening you would do kind of go and ride all the rides, like no you know. Way. Oh yeah. Oh so you God. do like you know all the 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 kind of this so everything from like you know this tiny little teacups that turn around and spin yep, and do things yep. to all the crazy stuff. And, you know, this uh, hi, uh, house with really funny mirrors and, you know, so they have all kinds of things. Right, and right. so you do that in the evenings and then, uh, or at least one of the evening, and then you do conference talks the day after. Really oh my fun. gosh. Oh, that's amazing. That's, that's <laughs> a really cool idea. Yeah. I remember doing um, DevOx in Belgium in, in yeah. the movie theater. And I always thought that was such a cool venue, although it's oh, intimidating yeah. because the way the lighting works, mm. you know, your audience is all in front of you on this very mm. steep, steep angle. And then the lights, I remember change, that you can't see it's anybody. Scary. It's scary. <laughs> and then behind you on the movie screen is you and your screen, or whatever you're sharing. And it's like, Oh, this is a little intimidating. I've never <laughs> seen myself so big. As no, that thing. no, no, there's some things we're not meant to see. And that's clearly one of them. So, all right, I'm gonna go back into our comments here. So, so Zaf, he's talking about stuffed characters. Yeah. I think it's always fascinating. Oh, nice. What, what folks put together at events. Which which one did you get? Did you get the Flutter Birdie from Google? Yeah, there's like for Flutter. Oh yeah, like for Flutter. Yeah, there you go. There, there you go. go. There we go. <laughs> and then let's see, Ro Rodri. Okay, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that one. Uh, it's it's Rod Rodrigo. Rodrigo from New York. Oh, from the New York okay. Japanese I, oh, group. Rodrigo, I New York. Okay, now I see it. it. Took me a little while. My brain was trying to put 
Drew it took you some yeah. time to parse yeah. it as well, but I suppose yeah. it's you, Rodrigo. Hi. I'm pretty. <laughs> that would make sense as a, as a fellow coffee club member. And great yeah, to I see. I am delighted you. to see Java One is is back as a full fledged event. You I'm know, looking I, forward to it. It's gonna oh, be fun. My gosh, I there were few events like Java One in the early aughts. Such an mm -hmm. amazing collection and. You always knew where the Brazilians were at, and it was just such <laughs> a neat atmosphere to be around 12, 15,000 people that oh, were yeah. all passionate about this amazing so programming cool. language. Oh, so uh, yeah, that's that's great to see that, that that's uh, coming. I back. hope to I see you at Java One as well, Rodrigo. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Oh, and we have a Whitney sighting. Whitney's here. Hi. Hello, Whitney. Whitney. And let's see what else. Oh, yeah. She says, great to meet you in Barcelona. Fantastic. Likewise. It was yeah. really fun. And then everybody else. Yeah, we, were, we, were, we were on the same team, you know, doing this kind of uh, competition and games and stuff. So, you know, team red. Woo. We had the red team and blue team. That was it. So we just had colors. So See, I, I think that's what's really interesting is when events put together either pre or post events for for speakers or, or other friends you know the oh it's ninja warrior stuff oh wow see again oh and yes and they talk about we're going to have a, a a competition they they probably mean like we're really going to have a competition you know that that stuff's going to happen oh i like i like that I can, i'm gonna have to steal that one i love it with the yes from now on that is my story and i'm sticking to it as well we were super tough i mean yes warriors <laughs> uh in fact i know java zone um always had journey zone afterwards and and that True. was always a lot of fun oh yeah that was that was a lot of fun i've done a lot of fun things there a little intimidating uh, if, if you're unprepared to say the least mm. I, I remember the year which i sadly couldn't do it but there was a bike ride and it mm. was a little cold and a little rainy a little bit people talk about frozen fingers and you know yeah. like and stuff. I mean, it, every, everyone survives with all fingers, I think. But yeah, I mean, I think still James talk still about has that. some pain in his hands from that one, as I recall. <laughs> every time I bump into him, we chat about that. And, and I, I think that was one where I was, was glad I, I couldn't stick around as much as I'm sure it would have been a you know, good story to tell. You know, 100 bad days makes 100 good stories. I wonder I wonder if it's ever coming back. We'll see how that goes. I don't know. You know I have to imagine, you know, it will at some point. There's there's no going to matter. I mean, that, we'll that to see. me is half the fun of these things is getting a chance to hang out someplace. And, True. You know, especially do some things that you would not normally do, you know, in, in, in other spots. <laughs> but, uh, oh, good times. Good times. But that's that's fun. I mean, it's always fun because you get to meet a lot of people. You get to to kind of meet them in a different way. I mean, it's, right, um, right. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's that's one of the interesting aspects of this work from home thing we've all been doing. Many of us have been doing for the last couple of years that you got a view into people's lives that you normally wouldn't have. You, know, you got to see their their pets. You know, my, my cat finally decided to leave here. He must have got a better offer, although now I hear the other one is floating <laughs> around. So I'm amazed one of them hasn't decided to jump in here and, and add himself to the the, the party. But you know, I, I think that's been very valuable to get to see people as more well-rounded than just their work selves, you know, personally. It is definitely. I mean, it's that's kind of the, the fun part. I mean, you met kind of, I don't know, uh, uh, partners, uh, yeah. kids, uh, pets, you know, all kind of different things. And it's... Mm -hmm. uh, it's really fun, you know, when you get like a, a dog or a cat jumping into a screen and then, you know, and yeah. just, it's, 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 it's fun. I mean, it's, yeah, she, and you she get, get, get a kind of different but... window into people's, uh, exactly. you know, homes in a way, right? Exactly. hundred percent, hundred percent. So speaking of the pandemic, I, I know you talked about adding a bunch of different ways of making coffee, which to me just seems perfectly responsible. You know, you, you need to have variety, <laughs> you know, maybe you want to have pour over one morning. That's fine. Do you, was there any any hobbies or anything you picked up during the pandemic that that you're hoping continue beyond? I mean, as we're starting to kind of come out the other side here. Um. Well, I mean, I ended up. I don't know if that goes as a new hobby or anything, but I ended up building up like a proper proper uh, office with like a lot of. I mean, that's not definitely not what you see here. It's more like. Sure a full proper mic and you know different screens and like almost full tv set of like right. you know t tv station set kind of things i mean not 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 as as impressive but you know a little bit so that was kind of fun and that made it much easier to do a lot of 
uh, virtual events and to do, sure. you know, to, to attend uh, some places that you wouldn't be able to, or, you know, it's much easier to jump on the screen and just do that. I mean, it's not as giving, but I mean, that was the best you could do back then. Mm -hmm. So I did some of those that was quite fun. And I kind of still do that because I mean, we don't get to travel everywhere all the time. Right. So, I mean, it's like, it's time. It's also, you can also say it's about environment as well. You know, you don't really mm -hmm. want to, you know, pollute as much as, you know, uh, uh, and, and uh, the other thing I did was uh, also fun because I was doing, um, we ended up doing, uh, what should I call it? Like a virtual workout sessions with some oh, sure. people. So I would run, like I would put my laptop on a stand in my living room, roll out a, a, a little uh, mat. Yeah. And then we would just do kind of different things. So we'd do like different stretching things and, sure. you know, we'd do, uh, I don't know, uh, some core and strength and things. Because um, funny story, I have this kind of side hobby thing that I normally do. Uh, I work in like, when I'm not programming, when I'm not writing code, I work at the gym as yeah. an instructor. So I do run classes in the gym. So oh, when the, the, the gym was closed, everything was closed and I still had to work out. We would do like, you know, I would put on the camera and I'll do my kind of workout and there will be like a bunch of colleagues and friends and everything just kind of join sure. in and we'll do that together. So that was fun. Uh, and I kind of, well, I don't hope we're gonna do that from home, but I kind of still hope we kind of, uh, we, we ended up, we continued doing some workout and doing a lot of different things outside, For outdoors sure. and everything after that. So we, I, I don't know if that goes as a kind of super COVID thing that you would want to continue doing that. But I think mm -hmm. that was kind of the fun things in this weird, weird world that we were living sure. on. Sure. Well, both Fuel and, and Whitney talk about maybe getting a bigger house slash apartment yeah. for work from home. And, and it is interesting to see what that dynamic is, you know, as I've said a few times, you know, my, my wife's right over my shoulder and that mm. does make for some interesting experience, especially because I don't have an indoor voice, you know, no. so, so that's apparently part uh, of this. And I'm not going to name any names, but some other people might have <clears throat> the same problem. <clears throat> yeah. I, I can't, you I know? can't imagine anybody in our line of work would have that <laughs> issue of, of having an indoor voice. So Zappy's picked up working. I think yeah, that's, oh, that's another part of this. That's, that's, that's really huge. cool. That's very cool. I, I wish I had any any uh, talent there. And and Zappies also says you're very buff. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> it's all about that. Uh, the fuel is, is sort of to walk and talk. Yeah, I mean that's that's a good a good thing to do. I try to yeah. walk around if I'm on a call. Oh, yeah. like, even if it's just around loops around my my island in my kitchen. Although sometimes then my cell phone decides to to bake out on me, but. You know, although uh, Fuel in says I use Corona as an excuse to not work out. I think a lot of people did not. <laughs> a lot out. of people. I mean, yeah. I did that, including. But then I was like, you know, when I realized that I was getting like sore muscles just by like, you know, doing right. basic stuff. Right. But then I realized like, nah, this is probably not a good idea. So, yeah. you know. Well, and, and Whitney talks about doing Animal Crossing on Zoom. <laughs> um, you know, it, it was really interesting, especially early on to, to see what's it like to socialize oh. Zoom. and and I make no bones about the fact this is part of why I started this this Twitch stream was an excuse to to socialize with my friends and, and pretend I'm doing work. <laughs> uh, totally agree with Glenn. There's two voice levels. There's there's loud and then there's and very the loud. Main. Yeah. Oh, OK, OK, OK. <laughs> yep. yep. So 100 percent agree 100 percent agree with glenn on that front you know, that's really I always, true i always love it when i'm in a small room they're like you know oh here's your mic i'm like no no i'm good believe me friend yep. if this isn't yep. being recorded or this isn't an auditorium i'm good i'm good so it's uh it happens to me as well it's i i know exactly how you how you how you feel uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> with speaking of animal crossing over zoom we did uh oh what's that called um among us yes Yes. Uh, so we, we did we Among Us over over times. over Zoom and over yeah. like whatever whatever. I mean, it wasn't Zoom, but it was something else. I think it was like Google Meet or something. Totally. But still, you know, it was uh, it was it was fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. Did it, did you stream anything that that you really enjoyed? I mean, I'm obviously a huge Ted Lasso fan, and I have tried to get literally everyone I possibly can to to do that to uh, to to hop on a 
you know, to watch Ted Lasso to me, that's just one of the most amazing shows ever. Um, hmm. any, anything that I, stood out to you? Um, no, I mean, there was a lot of things, but it, I don't really, I don't remember really the, like, I think it mostly went into uh, a bit of, towards like, uh, uh audiobooks and stuff so i mean i did stream yeah. and watch and stuff but it's like at some point you get really kind of sick and tired of tv and watching the sure. screen bigger screen smaller screen you know all that every day so i ended up you know when just listening to 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 audiobooks and stuff just while you're walking and stuff sure. like that and it ended up with more like kind of uh Kind of classic-ish uh, kind of books, so a bit more, a bit older ones, but mm -hmm. like really fun. Some sci-fi, some all kind of different things. Sure. But it's uh, I I think I ended up reading in like quotes, quote unquote, uh, with quite a few books through that time because you just sure. you know you just walk around or you walk with someone then you can talk. But sometimes right. you would just like end up just walking for just like a quick break between sessions it like sure. in, after right after work or i mean here in in, in norway it gets uh, there is a period of a few months where it gets relatively fast dark so yes you know in the worst like october ish october november ish it might get dark at like i don't know four or five p.m five ish yeah. i guess Pretty brutal. and then it gets really kind of dark and sad and everything so you would mm -hmm. want to see the sun so you would just go at like, I don't know, just right after you're done with working or you'd go maybe half an hour earlier and then you work in that half an hour and then it's kind of nice to listen sure. to something. Sure. So, you know, I did a few, I, I went through a few books. Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> done a few Among Us live streams for sure. That that was nice. always kind of fun. Uh, and then Whitney says, Jackbox. I'm unfamiliar with Jackbox. You'll have to... Tell me more. Oh, is that is that this Jackbox? Is that the actual game, or is it like a platform where you have a bunch of different games? I think oh. I remember there was something called yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. as a platform. I think like sure. you had uh, a guessing games and stuff like that. Maybe that was the one. Correct me if I'm wrong, with me. Well, and I, I know there was one thing that that would allow you to play like board games online with your friends. Yeah, I think it was something yeah, called very similar. Okay. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yes, 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 okay. yes. And then she binged the Great British Baking Show. Uh, I mean, the, the scary oh. thing is, you get down some of these rabbit holes, and oh. it's a lot of content, to say the least. To say the least, you, right? You know what I ended up doing? Speaking of baking, um, oh, okay. Flash. I, think I don't think I've tried flash, that. Flash, I don't know what that is. The sun like plays on on games where we can't we can't use the real names, but. Mm. <laughs> uh, but what what what? Truche patterns. Oh, good lord! <laughs> <laughs> um, but I ended up uh, baking a lot bread. Oh yeah, yeah. And I uh, uh, well, I mean, I was doing it before it was cool. I have to, I have Sorry, to say, you know, it's important to 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 let the record show that I was doing it before COVID. But I ended up doing a lot of sour bread. So oh. yeah. Mm. Do Do you have your own starter? Did you name your? Starter? Oh yeah. Uh, I, I don't have I didn't didn't give it a name, okay. but I kind of treat it as you you remember we had Tamagotchis almost like a pet. It's like you remember we had this tiny mm -hmm. little things right mm -hmm. Tamagotchi mm -hmm. thing you had to feed it and you had to make sure it's happy, and you know you had to check up on it and then you know so yeah we we, we I I have it I have um I I I still don't have a name for it I mean it's it's many years old now it should. Oh, okay. It should soon be able to go to school, I think. But wow. you know, uh, yeah, it's it's getting kind of old. But you know, <laughs> it's it just still like nameless. So much work to maintain a starter. That that's it always is. what gives me pause. I'm not gonna lie. It I'm is not gonna lie. So and true shape patterns are fascinating. It looks like I got to start digging into that. I huh? think we. I I I I don't think I. I don't know what that. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm. I, yeah. And then there's. A wave front collapse algorithm. Okay, this sounds like like something that's going to show up on a on a coding interview. Is that is that right? Sounds like sounds like something that we need to search sure. and you can apparently do it on paper as well. And uh, that sounds oh. yeah. I I'm I'm agree that this sounds like a pretty badass trick. I want to know more. You know, this is that sounds really. There is something I need to to search for. I think after right. this show. Right. 
there's a lot of things clearly we need to search for. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, no, the, the bread thing was a lot of fun. I, I still do that. Not as often as I did, although it's summer. So I like to go outside and do things outdoors as yep. much as possible because yep. yep. I know winter is, winter is coming. There's no getting around that. Um, True. Is, is there any any books that you ran into that you were like, hey, this was super good. Everybody else should read this? Um, no, I mean, like I said, I mean, I ended up reading a bunch of uh, kind of, I mean, you can call them classic. I mean, it's not like, I don't know, it's not like uh, Shakespeare classic, but I mean, it's sure. like relatively classic. So I, I really enjoyed, like from a totally nerdy perspective, I ended up, I mean, I was kind of late to the party, but I enjoyed reading Ready Player One. Yeah. Or being read to me. I mean, I guess mm -hmm. you can say, you have mm -hmm. to say that, but you know, it still was real, real fun. So Ready yeah. Player One, it was really fun with all the weird references to all this kind of, you know, things from the yep, yep. childhood or, cool. you know, all that. And that was, that was, I really enjoyed that. And I was like, I, a few things that I haven't tried before. So I actually had to Google those and just like, you know, I was like, oh, that was the game, you know, oh, that was right. the reference. Right. And right. I had to rewatch, you know, some, some movies that they were referencing and, you know, all that. So that was fun. Yeah, um, totally agree. So I think fuel, is that a link to the, to the, the, Coding challenge wave function collapse. All right. Ooh. Yeah, and we do see the link. So so I guess we'll have something to look at when we're all done here today. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to, have to copy and paste that in and, and show that. So this that's, that's the coding challenge 171 wave function collapse. Ooh, 171. Right. That's been a few cold challenges before that. It seems. Just a few. Just a few. Mm -hmm. Just a few. Mm -hmm. but, all right. Let me, let me, I haven't done lightning round in a while let me let me throw some lightning round at you Ooh, and what is that this is kind of like i throw a couple of things at you and then you kind of give me your initial reaction right so do you have <laughs> a, a a favorite meal or a um uh, like a comfort thing you fall back on if you've had a bad day bad week like ah uh, yeah it's time to make that <sighs> Does coffee cups? <laughs> of course, of course, because because you know the next question is coffee, espresso, or tea. Oh, um, yes, please. All of the <laughs> actually. Well, you know, it's 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 actually. I'm I'm not even I'm not even kidding. Most of, mostly, so I, I I would end up doing with both or all three, but probably yeah. less espresso, but more of the other ones. But yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Totally fair. Oh, I said Whitney found a medium article apparently about the, the wave function collapse, wave function collapse tutorial with a basic example in Python. Well, then you have two problems. Hmm. Oh, no, I, I should, I should <laughs> Python. Python's fine. All languages are fine. There's, you know, I, I'm, I've tried to put dogma behind me as much as I can when it comes to <laughs> I think about how many countless hours we've wasted debating things that don't really matter. But After I ended up, I, I, I'm back in the university, I had like a bunch of exams and there was a lot of pen and paper exams. Sure. So I ended up writing, uh, so I had a like four hour exam where quite a few hours of that thing, I ended up, uh, or I had to spend writing assembly on paper. No. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. So oh. after doing that, everything is just nice and easy. Nice. Fuel only oh. uses Shakespearean programming languages. I think that's fair. That's I really mean, nice. Get the do you have to do you have to invent a new command words like Shakespeare did with English? I mean, does it does it does it allow you to do that? How how do you code an iambic pentameter? I'd love to I'd love to see what that looks like. That would be that would be fascinating. <laughs> Assembly's underrated. <sighs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it's I, fast. It's fast. Yeah. Readable? I, nah. No, well, that can be discussed. No, not, we can talk about. So much. Yeah. Not so much. I, I, I think I talked about this last week with Jonathan, but, but my son ran into something that that was showing zeros and ones and made some comment to me about like, can you read this? And I'm like, well, sort <laughs> of. Uh, but you know, yes, all computer stuff boils down to on or off zeros, ones, whatever you want to call it. But nobody really writes at that level. And I was thinking back, well, I mean, I guess in college they made us do some of that, didn't they? We had to write some assembler. We had to write. We never. Had, I don't remember doing anything machine level, but we definitely had to do a bunch of stuff with with circuits and you know do this with nothing but AND gates or OR gates or similar types of things. And you know. So I remember speaking of that. I do remember like quick story. Uh, 
Uh, this one is based around your pieces. Oh, yeah. I, 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 oh. Somewhere. Ouch. Oh. Oh, I didn't know that it is based on that. That's that's really interesting. Yes, I know. I used to I used to write my hours in that thing, or I don't remember. It was many, 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 many years years ago. I think. I wonder if I yes, I think I used this for like you know putting hours and stuff into that thing. So it's it's like ERP. Uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, like uh, uh, many uh, ERP systems. Many, yes, exactly. Many, many. Yes. And then, yes, uh, exactly. Pretty much. Uh, so, so there is a lot of like things you use to put your hours in, put your right. travel expenses in, you know, all that. Oh my! And so fuel's oh, telling us funny. wrote a lot of the summaries. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And now, now what? Have we ever met I wanna, fuel? I, I don't know if we've, if we've actually. If I, I don't know your your real name, so I have no idea. But I wonder if if we ever talked like offline. <laughs> well, it, it, it's it's. This is a really small community. There's no getting around that. And it, it's, I, I did a talk last month in the Twin Cities at, at, at uh, one of our local meetups. And I anytime I do a local event, I always have to think to myself, if I tell this story, will people know who I'm talking about? <laughs> do I need to obfuscate the guilty party here? And and is it is someone in the room actually, do they know who I'm talking Is the person I'm talking about in the room? I mean, it, it, it's always gave me a little bit of. I know it's it's a small yeah. world, right? Especially it is, IT it is. world is. Love, I love this. That's a I love bold this statement. Man. Ooh. Old statement. I, I mean, I I had some. I cannot say I loved it, but I had quite a lot of fun writing Fortran seventy seven. Sure. Especially, I had a lot of fun debugging it. I mean, uh, you 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 can feel where I'm going, right? Yeah. Um. So a quick story there. The way Fortran 77 works, they say, and again, I might be lying now, but I don't remember exact specifics. It's been like 15 years ago at least. Uh, but the thing is, it has like first, I think, eight characters is considered uh, uh, comments. So you don't write anything on first eight. So you do like tap, 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 tap. And then uh, next, uh, because it's, I think it was like, I think it has something to do with punch cards and all that. So oh, I'm sure. um, it, there is a limit for it, for the line length. So yeah. from eight to 160 or 300 something, I don't remember, uh, number of characters, it's actually executable. But if anything goes past that, it's considered a comment again. So... Oh, okay. You can imagine if you write some code and you do forget that and you don't do line breaks, you get the weirdest error messages you could ever think of and you had no idea why it's happening. And then oh you had to gosh. take like a ruler, put it on the screen right. and just check right. if anything. <sighs> yeah. You write demos and games on Atari as a teenager. Yeah. I mean, nerds, nerds of the world unite. That's all I'm going to say. I'm, I'm totally with you on that, but. I'm glad uh, I, we don't have some of those restrictions. I mean, there's things I would change about Java in a heartbeat, uh, but you know, thank goodness we don't have to deal with well these characters. This white space means this, and this white space means that. And oh my gosh, yeah. A colleague of mine. Now I wonder if if that can be a colleague of mine because a colleague of mine actually writes demos uh, like for 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 I think Commodore 64 Atari or 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 or. or you know this thing so they actually do this you know this really cool videos and they used to win a lot of things so i i, I wonder if if that could 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 fuel be that guy you know or it could probably be 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 be, be a part of that group i don't know nobody web knows. gl demos all right step step forward for sure oh interesting yeah, there is uh let's see what do we got here we got assembler and demo coding erp oh my gosh cobol you're giving me high. Wait, 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 wait. So assemble uh, demos and assembly RP systems. That's a very interesting combo. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, but see, th this is just a good reminder that that even though a language or technology is old, doesn't mean you should kick it to the curb yeah. because there's there's still lots of interesting things that can be done there. And yeah, uh, we we had to do all sorts of weird things back in the day, <laughs> to say the least. Oh yeah, well, ruler on the screen is probably not the worst one. I mean, mm -hmm. I've had uh, like uh, 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 pixels and and pixel maps, you know, on putting paper on the screen well, and doing I mean, that. So I mean, I'm I'm of an age where I can remember doing 
HTML layout with tables and mm -hmm. having it not quite look right. And then you have to turn on your tables <laughs> and turn on the colors and try to figure out which tables embedded in which row and which column and, and why isn't everything lining up and, you know, pixel perfection is really, really hard. I, I remember the funny story of the, like when you talk about that. You remember we used to have like back in the days there was a game called Prince of Persia, like mm. the 2D one, not the one that got into like PlayStation and stuff, but like yeah. the old one, 2D one. You remember the, the the main character and how kind of natural that person would look when it moves and jumps and all that? Right. Do you rem do you know the story of that? How that happened? No. So. Again, that's like off my memory. So, you know, unless it's playing tricks on me, I think it was something like, so there was, I think the guy was, I think it was French, wasn't it? Well, anyway, so the, the creator, he, I, again, I might be lying, but I hope I'm not. So he ended up uh, taping his brother doing tricks, like, you know, run, running and jumping and doing all that yeah. on a parking lot. And he recorded that on a, t on a camera, like VHS camera. So then he would put that thing onto a, like onto TV, freeze it frame by frame, and oh. draw the kind of the the the, the silhouettes wow. of uh, of that thing, and then he kind of would transfer that into a computer graphics of oh you know God. kind of frame by frame jumps sure. and moves and all that, and it's because people were asking like, how did you manage to do that right. back in the days? Right. So you know, human-like, and then yeah. that was actually the thing. So, you know, he was actually having like a piece of paper on the screen, you know, uh, uh, lying on the side and just like drawing off the, the, the person wow. and stuff. That's so he nuts. was, yeah. his so, brother in a parking lot. <laughs> that's crazy. Fuel is saying ERP and migrations are a new technology. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't um, know if I agree with that. <laughs> I guess it depends on what we mean by new. I like how you put new in scare quotes there. Pixel perfection is always been oh, hard. Yeah, and definitely. I, and now the biggest challenge is we have so many different mm -hmm. things we're targeting. You know, I remember when I started doing web work, you, you just had to worry about basically one resolution and, and yep. everybody had a 15 inch monitor. And now it's- yep. And one browser or like, you know, right. something that looked like browser, yeah. Right, right. It, it was a lot simpler. Uh, in some way, shapes, or forms, but yeah, it's it's harder now with with this myriad of things we need to target, to say the least. But although a friend of mine did some work for a cable TV company, and he said if you thought Internet Explorer was a challenge in in the you know late '90s, early aughts, you should have seen the browser I had to write to on this cable set top box that made Internet is it, Explorer is it, four look. Amazing. Is it like? Uh... What we used to call TV text or text TV or something well, like so that. It would have been like what creates the little menu and everything on the TV. You know, if somebody had a uh, cable subscription, so it was that it was the the, the, the box that you connected to your TV, ouch. and he said it was miserable. Hmm. I can imagine that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So what? Uh, let's see. Fuel says on an old Atari, right a bit to seventy-eight thousand, and you get a pixel that lights up on the screen. Totally. That's that's the game, right? It's all about just make this pixel move. It's simple as that. Simple oh, yeah. as that. I, well, uh, me... yeah. oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say I could throw a few more at you and then I should I should I, oh, I sure. Let, I, I, gotta, I gotta let you go home at some point here. You've been at work. No, I mean it's I, it's fun as long as people you know we're 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 a bit past an hour now, but people I mean keep asking us questions, so I guess we'll go ahead. It's, so, so it's how great. About, how about pie versus cake? What do you reach for when it's dessert time? <sighs> I can do both. I mean, I don't have to, but I can do both. Totally. Uh, uh, maybe cake, that's more, much easier, sure. like more accessible in a way. But I mean, pie is good. I mean, I, I, I would do both. All right. Now, now, you're lucky in that you have both of these. I have none of them. Oceans or mountains? Oh, I, I mean, if I say both again, that would be boring, but I want to say that. So, but and now I have to pick one. I mean, it, I this mean, is hard. It's, it's your, it's uh, your is really fun, but I mean, depend. okay, look, I have a, I have a bit more politically correct answer. You know, when you live in Norway, you kind of have to love both, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> but I would say it depends on the season. Ah, that's good. So, ah, uh, yeah, see, I mean, uh, that's uh, so 
But winter is probably more fun in the mountains. Uh, sure. Summer, definitely, you know, ocean or water or lake yeah. or something Agreed. nearby yeah. of like, you know, liquid, uh, as a water, w water in liquid form. And then you have the solid form in the mountains in the winter. Right. right. Yeah, that's a good point. Good point. Mm -hmm. How about a food truck or Michelin star restaurant? Where are we going to dinner? Oh boy. Um, depends what's, what kind of food, food truck it is, but I guess, I don't know. It's, it's a tough one because, you know, if you say Michelin star thing, you're just like, you know, very pretentious and snobby and stuff. And if you go food truck, then you'll be like, you know, what kind, what kind of food truck is it? You know? And right. so mm, this is tough. I mean, I can't say both again. Uh, of course you can. Of course, there's no rules. Shoot. There's no rules. You know, it yeah, depends. I mean, you have to keep it entertaining, it right? Yeah, it, it depends. So, you know, I mean, if we're if we're going to core, I'm going to core. But, you know, what do you people you think on the stream? I mean, yeah, food I mean, truck or Michelin star? I, I where, where, I did an event once where the lunch was a set of food trucks. They had. Oh yeah, um, I've done a, I've done a few trucks. actually. That was really really a smart idea where possible. I've done it in. Where was that? That was somewhere in one of the Baltic countries. I think it was in oh, Lithuania, sure. and it was in the winter. And it's when really it says in the summer, you really. Go food truck. Oh yeah, and there you go. And then in the, in the winter, you go you go to Michelin. Oh yeah, I love that. Actually, I I'm I'm totally with you on that, Glenn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's really bad, really cool. A bad idea. So I'm like. So we were, that. you know, we, we 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 what happened to us at that conference was, it happened the exact opposite. It was winter. It was cold. It was really 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 mm -hmm. cold wi mm -hmm. uh, wind, and we were waiting for our food and for for like to get from the food trucks and that was no That's so i idea. totally with you on that but. Idea. yeah 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 it depends depends on the company i would say it depends on the company both ways the people you're Good. with as well as who's paying <laughs> can, I, can I get this on my expense report or not you know that's also an interesting point yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so how about uh board games versus computer games um Probably board games, but again, okay. it depends on 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 kind on on the kind of. Um, we do play actually quite a bit of board games, like there's like a bunch of friends, but there's also we have a kind of big group at, at work as well. So we have like a, 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 a like a big shelf or a set of shelves full with board games, but yeah. usually kind of board games that do not take like three days to complete. Yeah. So not that much of, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, even though it's totally fun and right. it's really cool. But, you know, usually you would you don't have the luxury of playing for that long. And yeah, so usually it's like a shorter ones. But, I would, you know, th those are fun as well. You know, Dungeons and Dragons and, you know, all that. Yeah, so. I've, I've got a few friends that are deep into the board game world and it uh they've got some games that definitely qualify it if, if if i need to to study for a semester to figure out how to play this game i don't know that i'm really yeah. ready it's like oh it's just That's... really simple once once you've played it 15 times like, uh, yeah okay. and it takes one week to play through every time so you know yeah yeah exactly it's exactly. easier exactly. but what you know what we actually started doing uh we started with this I don't know how you call that, but basically, so there is a chessboard in our office mm -hmm. and there is a little indicator showing if it's like the whites or blacks turn. And then you do a move and then you flip that indicator and then you go on with your day. And then somebody else passes, it's like, hmm, interesting. And then they do a move and then they flip the switch again and then they kind of, let. so then we have a game going on over like several days and nobody knows who played what. And right. Some people have played for both sides at some periods of, of time. Of and it's actually really fun. Uh, if yeah. you haven't tried that, do try that. It's actually quite fun. Interesting. I, years ago, I remember we were, we were playing Catan one evening and we didn't have quite the right number of people. I, I can't remember if we were short one or had an, we had, oh, we had an extra person. That's right. We had one extra person, but we didn't have an expansion pack. And so what mm. we decided to do was anytime a seven was rolled, in addition to now you get to move the robber or whatever, hmm. the person who rolled the seven stepped out 
and the person <laughs> who was out stepped in. And so by the end of the game, you had played basically every single spot. And, and so it was a really fascinating because now the strategy changes a bit because you're like, oh, wait, I don't want to. I know what you have. I want to hurt you. Or I want to, you know, and, and so it was just, it was a really fun way of, of you know, oh, that's fun. everybody enjoy without, without having to totally change the rules. But uh, that's really so, cool. Uh, so Zaffy's asked a question that I kind of get at to game of Thrones or lost in space. You know, I'm, I'm always interested in, in sort of, you know, game of Thrones versus Lord of the Rings would be the way I would usually ask that question. But, but yeah, that um, those are very different. <laughs> Um, yeah, they are. I uh, would probably go, I don't know, Game of Thrones is kind of, it's really fun, but I have a horrible, you know, um, uh, you know, horrible thing to admit is that I haven't actually watched it fully. Oh, sure. So, so, so I'm terribly sorry about that. It's just, it's not, it's not anything with the quality. I'm not saying it was bad or anything at all, but it's just, it's just my lack of time. That's nothing no, that's else. Just it's so that said, you know, people don't get mad at me. You know, it's yeah. just, I just, you know, it just, I, I, I had to travel to the conferences and do the talk right. and actually do the work right. and, you know, all that, because speaking of the conferences, this is not my job. I just do it for fun and I just do it inside of everything else. So, right, you know, right. um, so that's, I, I blame a little bit on that. I kind of, you know, but uh, probably Lord of the Rings, I would end up, okay. I okay. guess, uh, if, if, yeah. So I, I feel, I would say mm. in the last season was where they lost me a little bit. I think they rushed it. And I, I think that's mm. a pretty, pretty consistent um you know theme and and yeah you've got to be you know to a couple of folks here both uh, whitney and and uh zaffy's have talked about how it's it's there's a little too much violence and it, it's sometimes violence for no real reason other than mm. violence um but so whitney is a game sommelier oh now that i could get behind because to your point the, the part here about teaching you how to play oh. it is key. And I've got a couple friends that I think would qualify as game sommeliers. Mm. But if you don't have them around, what do you do? You try to figure it out. And and there's been times where my family and I have tried and we're like, we don't know how this really works. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's fascinating. No, no Exploding reading. kittens is real fun. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like, I mean, you don't have to learn that you do it like real fast and real, you learn it real quick, but it's right, like, it's, right. uh, I've, I've, I've played with some people that get, oh, no reading the rules. That's, yeah, because that's, the sommelier you know, explains it to you. So you don't, you don't have to deal with it. So I, I think that's, I think that's if you have a good memory, that's great. Yeah. Well, that's true. That's true. Or if you can just call the, the oh, movie. the shining, all, all the work and no that's play, you know. Movie such a good oh, yes. movie uh yeah i hear you it is i mean it's it's not as bad as some to say to say the <laughs> least so power grid i've never played power grid and no i don't I think i know. did but i think i know i, I might know. be okay i mean okay. It, it's always interesting i know there's there's a certain uh brand or or genre of games now that are i think would be called destructive game where it's oh? play once and that's it oh so yeah 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 Destroy the game while you play it we, we we well, we played something. I don't remember what's it called, but there is this game, basically a digital board, a mix of digital and mm. board game version of Escape Room. Okay. So you basically have to look for it. yeah, look for clues and do this and all that. Sure. And it is uh, it is just you end up, uh, but then once you played it, if you played it once, you probably will know where to look for, you know, at least maybe if you played twice for sure. Sure. But that's, sure. Uh, but that's quite fun. Okay. Also called legacy games, apparently by, by fuels. Mm. Uh, recently okay. There. And Whitney's recommending Quarto as a recent fave. She picked up at the, the game cafe. Oh, See, that's cool. one of the nice things about living in Austin. For sure. That's what it sounds uh, like. Pandemic fun. legacy possible best experience. <laughs> wow, that's interesting fuel. I'll have to pandemic got really popular for some reason yeah. during fast ah, the last couple of years. I don't, I don't, I don't, what is this thing? I mean, I what know. like did people experience something? I I don't know. I mean it's, what it's, what's it's what's like, up with uh, that? there was a Matt Damon movie, I think it was like called Contagion or something. Oh yeah. Was, I've and, seen and it. That <laughs> spiked in in viewership during the pandemic. And I thought, really, folks, really? <laughs> there's so much this other is... content you want to watch something that's 
we're all living through. I mean, not as bad <laughs> as, as what would happen in Contagion, but still, it's like, uh, I don't really think I need to. Uh, in, in the beginning, it kind of looked kind of close to that. You know? True, true. That's that's true. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. For, 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 good point, Panda, uh, Fuel. Oh, yeah. Pandemic okay, okay, okay. Before that, but, fine, fine, yeah, fine. Definitely, I'm sure, was a resurgence uh, during the pandemic. Uh, I, I've, I just, you, you're probably definitely right. I mean, I just heard a lot about pandemic during COVID. Yeah. So yeah. that's okay. That's let me point. let me rephrase that. Well, uh, my friend, I, I have already monopolized far too much of your time. And I, I know it's that it's, it's pleasure it's be all mine. <laughs> right now, and I, I really appreciate hanging out with me as always. I hope that we get to be in the same meet space at some point this year again. Uh, and, probably. Uh, are you coming to Joe one? I'm not sure. I got to double check my calendar, but you know, we'll we'll see if what what does or doesn't happen. You know, it's, Ooh, it's San Francisco in December. Yeah, That's we'll, really we'll be nice. in San Francisco in December. I know that for sure. Um, you know, we'll we'll see what kind of trouble gets us into, but you know, hopefully, I, I can buy miss, a cup of coffee somewhere. I miss San Francisco. So um, oh, I know, I know, it's it's so good. So uh, yeah, contagion for the win. Oh wait, <laughs> contagion we got for the win. <laughs> one more from from Foolish Nabel. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that one. Oh yeah, uh, I, I, I yes, uh, that's uh, that's uh, I yeah I do. Okay, look at that. it's a small world. So he's related to Java One. Okay, all right. Uh, I don't think so about that, but it's okay. All right, it's all good. It's all good. So uh, apply to. Oh yeah, yes, exactly. Another pitch for Code Mash. Hang out in the water park in January. In, but in water park in January. How does this Ohio. work? What's well, indoors? So in, ah, in, okay, in, okay, okay, indoor fine. water parks. So the one of the biggest ones in the world is actually in Wisconsin, the Dells, and they have several indoor things that in fact I one time we went there with, with our, our son when he was much younger, and they actually had one room is the wrong word because it's so large, but they actually have signs in the wind that say that's real sunlight coming in. You need to apply sunscreen, even though it's oh. the middle of winter you will get oh. a sunburn in here because that's these these windows are bringing the sun in for a reason that's so, really cool yeah yeah so all i right. think well, we'll have to apply to that one then i think so i think i'll have to add that onto my my list here for for january mm -hmm. for sure get me out of the house for for a few days in the middle <laughs> of january um although i the one year i did do that event it snowed and mm -hmm. let's just say getting from the venue to the airport and then sitting in a little crj while it continued to pound snow was was a um, mm. you know an interesting yeah that kind of yeah yeah exactly i mean so, well i mean we're we're kind of used to i, I live in the midwest uh, so snow. i have no yeah. i have no com i have no round no grounds for complaint when it comes to snow i, I should leave if, if that's my problem so <laughs> anyway so i'll be back next week we'll be talking about carvel with sumik so that'll be a little earlier because i didn't want him to have to stay up until an ungodly hour of the night for him and um oh yeah i'm sorry zaf he's won't be able to come to spring one um, but hopefully you know we'll we'll, nice. we'll, be, we'll be back in toronto i'm sure at some point you can hang out with us you know we we try anyway to get around so let me i gotta find the right chunk here well, thank you again, my friend. Such a pleasure. I hope you have a good thank evening. Thank you so much. And, and have a good I, week. And, you know, we'll, we'll see you on It's Twitter a great soon. start for the week. It's been a pleasure being here and pleasure chatting with you all, Fox. And, and you know, it's it's hope to meet you, see you again somewhere around the globe. And, yeah. well, I, I'll see you see you soon, Nate, I hope. And I hope Whitney so too. and Mary and everybody else on the stream, you know, Rodrigo as well. <laughs> yeah, what a, what a great group of commenters today. I really appreciate it, folks. Thanks for making this a lot of fun. So, And everybody else who I did not mention, I mean, I just, you know, it's for, for, for the reasons of time and space, you know, it's really right. hard That's to right. mention Apologies everyone. But, you know. left out. <sighs> Thank you, my friend. <laughs>